Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk to you about what's going to happen with the Tesla and Palantir after the Fed meeting today. So it was a really, really weird meeting where uh, they, Ch Chairman Powell said that he cannot see that the inflation is going down. This is trueflation. You can see we are at 2.4. I mean, I know that this is not the official data that they're looking at, but even the official data went from 9% to what is it? 4.0%. So I don't really know at this point what they're talking about, but when it comes to the Fed, that I guess is the general reality of the day. You don't know what they're thinking or doing because, you know, when inflation was going up, it wasn't going up. And now when inflation is coming down, it's not coming down. So what the heck? And he actually said that there's going to be a possibility of two new rate hikes, but he seemed very tense during the whole press conference and almost seemed like he was saying something that he didn't believe. And the market also didn't really believe what he was saying. So it was a very interesting FOMC meeting. And I want to talk to you about my two favorite stocks and what I think is going to happen to them. So first of all, uh, we are not buying these stocks because of what the Fed is going to do or not going to do. And my general advice is always has been and always will be that you do your own valuation. And if your price is below the buying price and you have money on your account, then you buy. And if it goes lower, then you buy more. And if it goes lower, you buy more. So and you're happy. And if it goes up, then you're happy because of that. So that is my general advice. Um, I'm a very long-term investor, so I couldn't, couldn't give a flying F about what the Fed does now or doesn't do, but I'm going to go into a very short-term speculation because why not? So Palantir has been uh, blowing up like crazy in a straight up line. Red days are very rare. Um, there has been a few, but you know, barely, barely red. So we are very much due to a, due for a pullback. And if there is a general market pullback, I think Palantir is also going to have some sort of a pullback. I don't know if it's going to be a few red days where we, you know, it's like minus zero point something percent or we go back to 12. I don't want to make predictions about that because I don't know the short term predictions, but I want to show you something because what, what would work against this. And I want to show you how real the AI bubble is. Look at this piece of news. France is Mistral AI raises 105 million euros, which is almost the same as dollars, shortly after being set up. So these guys started the company. I heard something like it was, they started the company four weeks ago. And just because it's an AI company, it was valued at 240 million euros and investors paid in 105 million euros. How the F is that possible? This is a company with no product, nothing proven. I mean, it's just a blank sheet of a business plan presentation and employees and costs at this point. So that is nuts. So the AI bubble is alive and well and is really, really real. So it might prevent Palantir from crashing and maybe Palantir will go up to 2025. We don't know. That is the two options. Now, Tesla is a little bit different because uh, yes, okay, so on Tesla, there's two competing stories. Like you have Tesla, the underappreciated AI play, and then you have Tesla, the car maker, and the short-term story of the, of the company, because the short-term story of the company actually really gets affected uh, by the interest rates. And Musk even said on the earnings call that, you know, don't look at uh, the next few quarters, uh, look at us in a year or two years from now. And the market seems to be doing exactly what Musk wanted. They are not looking at the short term. And I think that a lot of uh, Tesla's valuation increase has been because, I mean, one, they were undervalued. And number two is people connected the dots that they are actually a real world AI that have an actual product that people actually pay for. And I think that was adding into the appreciation of uh, Tesla stock. But... I think here we're more susceptible to a pullback because if there is even one more rate hike or two more rate hikes, that's very bad for the for the car business. Granted that it's not such a difference now, you know, from going from zero to 25, 
basis points or from 25 to 50 basis points. That's like a 100% increase in interest. Now, going from 525 to 550 is uh, like a 5% increase in the interest cost. So it's very, very minor, but it might just be enough to trigger a nice uh, pullback in Tesla stock. But I don't know. So really this video was made just for fun. I cannot predict the future uh, short-term stock price. I hope I can predict the future long-term uh, stock price of these companies. And really the long-term, if you're a long-term investor, it has nothing to do with what the Fed did today or didn't do or how Jerome Powell spoke. The only thing that matters is you do your valuation and if the company is below your target price, it's a buy. And whenever you receive money, uh, then send more money to your broker account and buy as long as the price is below your target price and you will do just fine. So thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and you can also hit me up on uh, Twitter. Vince is bullish. That's my Twitter handle. Um, yeah, thank you so much. See you again in the next video. Ciao, ciao.